Yeah, so I'm, I'm very, uh, very happy to host this exchange, uh, which is part of the whole effort of prefiguration of the, the Maison de Bebe, which is uh, seen as a space for the reception in future of uh, Togolese objects with a traditional dimension now uh, kept in Western uh, collections. Uh, more generally, this Bebe project is the opportunity to animate an ambitious, original and innovative conversation around the, the current term of the restitution of African objects. And uh, under the lead of Mathilde and the priests of the Union of Traditional Cults of Togo, a scientific committee was set up and the call of submission for original idea that could contribute to the dynamic of prefiguration was launched. And it is one of those submissions that will be present uh, now. So, uh, Augusto and David, you have the floor. Okay, nice to having all of you here. Uh, my name is Augusto Gerardi and he is uh, David Barreto. To introduce a little bit about ourselves, um, uh, my name is Augusto Gerardi. I am a researcher and an artist from Venezuela. Part of my work is to understand the relation between art, politics, and digital media. My works has been exhibited in New York, in Paris, in Berlin, and in Caracas. Uh, for before I came to Germany, I'm really new in in the city. Uh, I worked for four years with the European Union, uh, developing a program to try to reduce violence uh, among young people. And uh, well, I am friends from David since many, many, many years ago. We don't see each other since at least six years because we are both part of the diaspora. But well, we are now working together again. So, hey, my name is David Barreto. Um, as I was to mention, I'm also from Venezuela, just from a different city, Maracaibo. Uh, I'm an engineer, have a plenty of experience working as a, not only software developer, but as an architect, as an engineer manager, as a technical director as well. Uh, I do a lot of blogging as well, and not only for blocking technologies, but also for software development in general. I have a master's degree in system engineer and a bachelor in electronic engineer as well. And as part of my work, I, I've been working with uh, big companies here in, in the US, in Canada as well, Fortune 500 Silicon Valley companies. And for the last seven years, I've been working, I've been living here in Toronto, in Canada. Uh, and my focus has been for the last, let's say, year and a half is blockchain technologies. Okay. So this project started with the problem. The, we, after like uh, having a seminar with Matilde, um, we understand a lot of like different perspective, perspective about restitution. And then, um, uh, well, I was thinking after the seminar, okay, we, we can use technology to, uh, in a way, find a solution or like find strategies, not a, not a solution, find a strategies to negotiate the restitution. So the main problem is that in a lot of like ethnographic museum around the world, like the Humboldt Forum, the Stadtische Kunstsalungen in Dresden, the British Museum, there are like a lot of looted objects from all over the world. And in this case, or in our case, from Togo. And these objects are unable to find a solution, how to restitute this object, or what is the, the when we talk about restitution, what are we going to restitute on in which way? So after like this seminar, I was thinking a little bit uh, how we can use technology in order to like propose or to open this kind of negotiation about restitution. So uh, I talked with David that is, he is like a specialist of blockchain technology and I proposed one idea of like maybe we need to develop like a cryptocurrency maybe we need to develop this and that and since the past like December we were working together in this idea in restitution DAO. The restitution DAO is the first the colonial DAO created for the restitution and repair of the colonial wound in Togo and in the world. So I know that this opened like a lot of questions but I will describe like easy the how is this DAO working on what is a DAO and how, what is this kind of new institution that we want to create? So the first thing that we need to learn or like we need to understand is that this institution, this DAO, 
is like a digital autonomous organization that can empower the Togolese with a decentralized exchange system to solve and develop the inequalities of the past to invoke a new future. This sounds really abstract, but we are going to like transform into something that is really, really doable. And we are going to do it with just three elements. I will talk from the most important to the more technical element. The first element that, we'll, that we need to create in order to create this digital organization is to create a DC or the Council. The Council is the most important part of the DAO because the Council is made by the group of activists, institutions, NGOs, artists, priests that are actively rewriting the decolonial history of Togo. The Council is like a society that will rule over this DAO and there is, rule, is ruling using the techniques that they are like developing to try to rewrite this history. So the second element that we are going to use to build this organization that it develop the capital of this organization are the NFT. We are going to use no fungible tokens that can work as a negotiation relation or a, 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 this is like the, the tool what, what we are going to use as an as a, as a negotiation tool with the institutions. And the third part is the DAO, that the DAO is like a technology that is basic on blockchain and allowed like different like decision taking in an horizontal and decentralized way. So the restitution DAO is a new kind of digital organization that live inside the blockchain and you can access to this institution using a web browser or a mobile app. The Restitution DAO will work to organize, manage, and distribute responsibility among these actors by using a democratic voting system by the decision making. And as well, the DAO capital will manage using a multi sig wallet in a decentralized and participative way. That means that if you are an actor inside Togo and you want to collaborate in this debate, you can access to this DAO and then you can, in a, some kind of parliament, vote for the next step or the next project that you and all the people that are like trying to, to develop these ideas together uh, are going to, to, to do. So, Right, so every DAO, as I was to mention, uh, they usually have a, a voting mechanism to come to a consensus, uh, especially when the there's a lot of members uh, in the DAO. In this case, we are gonna have a, a council, <coughs> which is gonna be probably probably limited in how many people are gonna join. I don't know, less than 30, for example. Uh, we explore different ways for voting because in, in the DAO space, uh, one of the most common ones is to have one vote per coin, uh, but this leads to some issues of plutocracy. So whoever has more coins has more voting power uh, we explore also the idea of having one wallet and one vote, which is the closest to a democratic system. And it works in this case when there's a, a small number of members, and by small I mean like less than 50, where people know each other, in, which is going to be the case of the council, right? It's a small council that people know each other. So this idea of one wallet, one vote works really well. Um, we also explore a more open approach to have like a, anyone can participate pretty much like any human uh, can be part of the DAO as well. So, uh, but this has the issue that we want to limit the control of the decision-making, the NFT, the treasury to only people from the, from the community, right? So we don't want people from outside the community to have a voting power. So this is the one one in one vote is the most appropriate for this particular, or at least we think so. That's one of the options we're proposing. And, and the idea is that every member of the council, they're gonna have a crypto wallet and they're gonna use that wallet to exercise the, the right to vote. This vote is gonna be on the blockchain, so it's gonna be available for anyone to see. So there's gonna be a record of the decision-making. And different from the voting system that we have normally in democracies, this vote is transparent. So anyone can see who voted for what. Uh, in the future, there's technologies that are being developed that's gonna make uh, voting as well uh, anonymous. As, as regular democracies are. But for the, in the meantime, the blockchain is completely open for anyone to audit. The other cornerstone of a DAO is not only the, the voting system, but I think the most important thing is going to be the multi-sig wallet. Because as Augusto mentioned, there's going to be a treasury. 
uh, that's going to control funds from the DAO. And this treasure is going to have things like the, all the cryptocurrency, let's say Ether, Matic, whatever. And it's going to also hold the, the NFTs. So the multi sig wallets adds like a, like a joint bank account where in order to move funds out of the treasury or to do anything with those funds, you will need the approval of either all the members of the council or a pre-programmed amount of people out of the total amount of the council. For example, if you want to pay some ether from the treasury to someone else, uh, anyone can start a transaction, but only after all the other members of the DAO approve the transaction is that the funds leave uh, that wallet. So that gives the, the idea that there's not a single member can, can control all the funds so that, that gives protection against some kind of a you know, malicious actor that tries to take advantage of it. And, and finally, so the most important thing in the treasury is going to be the NFTs. And for those of you who don't know much more, much about NFTs yet, uh, the NFT is going to be a virtual representation of all the entities, the talismans, and the forces looted that we're going to transform into this digital copy of them. So an NFT can be a 2D image, could be a 3D model. So could be could be a video, could be an audio. There's multiple ways. It's any any type of digital representation can be minted as an NFT. So the DAO, in this case, the council should be could be the one who decides what uh, artifact to turn into an NFT and what price to put it on the market as well. Because there's going to be a way to to raise some some fund from the for the goal of restitution of the physical object. Uh, as mentioned, these NFTs are going to be stored in the DAO's treasury that is going to be controlled by the multi-sig wallet, which every member of the council is going to have a, a say on it. And we explore different networks to, to implement this and to mean the, uh, these NFTs. And we think that the Polygon must be the, the most likely network for this project, given that the, there's good compatibility for the NFT marketplace and also has very low fees as well, which is very important. So, yeah. Uh, returning to the idea of the council, um, the council is the core of this organization uh, because, and this is the first step that we need to to create. No, it's not about the technology. It's not about the blockchain technology. It's about to organize and, in a way, create a community of people that are thinking about the same and put it together and finding like propositions that could work in a short time to develop their ideas. So the council are only made by Togolese. This is really important because these people from the council are the one that will run the treasury and they are the only one that can propose project of the DAO. So the people can offer ideas in, the, in a public conversation, in a public debate, but it's just the people from the council, the one that can like propose this idea inside the DAO and they are the one that can move the money or like get the money to produce or to transform this idea into realities. So they will legislate and democratically approve the transaction of the NFT and manage all the resources of the DAO. And we think that it needs to be just made by Togolese people because uh, we don't know anything about uh, what kind of like entities or objects are in this museum and they are the ones that can say okay maybe we can think in restitution using this technology for one specific uh, object or for one specific talisman but for other it doesn't deserve or like we can transform this into like a painting of like a famous artist that is like in a town that he can like make a representation of it all this decision all the strategic decision will take Will, will be taken by the council. So as part, to organize this council at the first time, we are proposing to create this Discord. That means that Discord is like a platform like WhatsApp or uh, Telegram that allows users to talk and to share information. So in this, in this Discord, we, are, we, we create already one section that is called the council. So the council need to make interviews to the people and need to know exactly which people are getting in. And in the moment they get in, we are going to develop and to create his crypto wallet to access to the DAO. So the, the, the importance of understanding the council is that you have a group of people that are like 
rewritten the decolonial history of Togo, then they have this organization inside Discord, then you can organize weekly a meeting to accept new members and each time you accept a new member inside the group of the council, they gonna have a wallet attached to their identity. So you have control of all the people or you know all the people that are inside the council that yet this transform this debate or this kind of like conversation into a close conversation with each other and not with different actors that maybe you don't know. So I can explain one of the workflows to go from, you know, having an idea of meeting NFTs, a discussion to actually create the NFT. So you start with the council that, as Augusto mentioned, every member of the council has been interviewed, has been vetted, so we know exactly who they are, they know each other. They're going to have a, a wallet, as we mentioned as well. So let's say that on Discord, someone proposes, hey, why don't we mint an NFT of this particular artifact, right? So the, the, the discussion ensues on Discord to say, okay, well, I agree, or maybe let's choose this other uh, object from, from, you know, from the collection. And maybe people say, well, what about if we mint in this particular format, maybe a 3D model instead of a 2D image. So all that discussion can happen on Discord. Some DAOs go one step further and do like a more formal uh, discussion using like a form style. But the idea is just to have an open discussion to see, to have some, some more formality about, okay, what are we trying to agree on? So once the idea is a little more clear, you submit the proposal for a vote. So one member of the council goes, okay, I'm going to submit this particular proposal to a vote. For example, let's make an NFT of this very particular uh, cultural artifact to sell for this price and to have the NFT in this format. So you put it on a vote. So every member of the council now can use their wallet and with the DAO, they can vote for the proposal. They can say yes, they can say no. If the proposal has enough votes, which you can configure what is the threshold, what is the minimum quorum, all of that, if it passes, then uh, you can go actually in and mint and create the, the NFT. And the NFT is going to be now be part of the treasury. And you can now put the NFT either to negotiate with museums or to put it for sales in NFT markets. And once there's a sale, uh, the, the funds, the, the cryptocurrency goes back to the, to the treasury for the DAO to use for different purposes. So, yeah, the... The intention of this project or like the, the idea that we are going to manage about restitution is that um, the NFT really is like a, a smart contract. So the thing that can empower the Togolese to reclaim or to claim this, this uh, entities and this object to the institution are that they are going to authorize or to create like a, a, like a legal digital statement that can prove that that object is an authentic object and then with this contract they can offer to the this contract to the institution to open a negotiation like okay you have this 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 entity or this object and then you don't have you don't know what you have you you just have like a a little bit of information and the people that bring this object to you so we are offering more information because you can load a NFT with metadata. You can fulfill this with a lot of information that is missing in this institution. For example, in retribution of the original object, or you can offer this and then you put a price and then they are going to pay you to develop another project about this object or like to, I don't know, to if, for example, this belongs to a community that needs to have a school, you can, sell this NFT and build a school inside this community. Or if they need something inside the, the, the DAO that things that are important for the future developing of Togo are, and for the future developing of the idea of restitutions, you can use this NFT to make pressure to this institution to open the dialogue with the council to understand what is their responsibility. So if they upset, this 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 kind of trade, the, the the council and the DAO earn cryptocurrencies, and they receive the institutions, the ethnic, the ethnological museum or like any kind of institution receive the NFT. And if they say no, we are not going to cooperate. Well, you are like you can transform this into a mediatic power, into a news saying, okay, we are offering a way to repair this wound, and you are like denying once more time following the old ways. So 
uh, for example, to explain this. And one thing that's happened that is really like a, like an actual debate. In the exhibition of Renzo Martel, they create an NFT of one African sculptor and the exhibition opened like the past two, two weeks ago. And the problem with the creation of that NFT is that they create with the plantation group of artists one NFT of one sculptor and they use for create this NFT one image that has copyright. So the museum demand the artist to use one image that has copyright. So for us, we think about all this option and for us, because we developed this idea of the NFT as a relational contract, we are going to, in a way, to prevent this kind of things that happen because our objective is not to first to violent any kind of institution is to propose a negotiation system is not to to force someone to do something is to open a new channel where we can discuss the future of this object or this artifact and to have like the most important thing is to have an open channel to talk between the people that feel that something is missing with the people that that has this things that are missing. And if we can create this channel to negotiate using crypto active, NFT, and all the other kind of new technology that we will appear, I think that we are going to, to in a way, invoke a less unequal future. So thank you so much for your time. Uh, and now I think that Sename uh, have some question for us. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, you know that I am a big fan of your project. And when we launched this call, of, uh, this call for conservation, it was with this aim of uh, feed and um, conventional approach of this question of restitution and going in direction that had not been envisaged uh, until now. And uh, <laughs> we can say that we are we are helped with your with your with your project. Um, I am, uh, however, not the defender of the virtualization of everything, but I found there uh, in the subtlety that you are developing uh, at the crossroad of blo NFT, blockchain, and perhaps almost inevitably uh, metaverse a very effective and political way of mobilizing those uh, uh, technology. Obviously, it raises a lot of questions. I think the audience will not hesitate to point out. But me, I will just want to point one uh, specific uh, uh, element. We understand the power that this uh, project can have for the reconquest uh, of the right of population who are the first owners of the objects and even the economical uh, power that it could give them. But do you, do you not see a risk that it is uh, a movement who can mitigate the importance of the very physical objects over which they the, the are virtual double uh, could take power, or maybe it is totally assumed in your project that the virtual representation can become what is the more important in future, and we will not any longer try to have back the physical objects. And we can go as far as we can go, we can have tomorrow, we can imagine that tomorrow we have virtual museum on the, met the metaverse with lots of objects in the collection uh, coming from uh, different collections all over the world. But it is this virtual patrimonial which is more important for people. And is it a risky or is it something you, are, you assumed in your project? Um, can I, I can ask, like, if I understood your question, it's like, um, I think that um, in a way, both like options can be developed in the same way because um, if you if you move this object to like a metaverse museum, 
that is based on restitutions. And then you can create this kind of negotiation in the virtual world that can describe the wrong politics about uh, different kind of looted objects around the world. Uh, I think that it, this, this is never the, the virtual will defeat the real or the real will defeat the virtual. The only thing that, uh, that I found with this project is that you can negotiate using the virtual object to make a statement about the real object. So in a way you can transform this relation that is just based in the materiality of the object that is not what this uh, with what happened with these kind of objects because they are not just materiality they are like a realm of like a cosmovision is embedded to this object so you are adding another part of this cosmovision that maybe is like embedded in this kind of like technological computational realm to put into risk the relation that has this institution with the original owner and with the material cosmology of this object. So when you put this into risk, I think that you will start to move the things away. You know, they, they are you are moving the the this kind of like lock door a little bit to be open into another thing that we don't know. We are going to to discover together, I think. Well, one other approach could be that I've been thinking because the, the question is very good. Like what happens if the digital copy ends up being more influential than the real one in the museum, right? And that's a very good question. And, you know, you can always mint two NFTs per object, right? And you always keep one in the treasury to use in the future for virtual museums, and you put one for sale. That is perfectly possible. That has a downside that maybe it decreases the value of the one you're selling because now it's not really unique. There's another copy, but that's a, that's a way to, to say, okay, I, at least I'm keeping one of them for myself because you don't want to get in the same situation and go, hey, we, we lost the objects again, but now in the, in the digital space. So that's one solution as well. Or you can, or you can, for example, create NFTs with different arts, right? So you can create, an, for the same object, an NFT that is a exactly 3D representation of the object using some kind of laser scanners. But also you can create maybe one that is a, more like a voxel or pixelated, similar to Minecraft. And, and you put one of them and the other you put for sale to raise funds. So there are ways around this problem. But it's a, it's a very good um, observation. Thank you. Do we have any question in the audience? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, so Ooh, don't forget to introduce yourself yeah. before asking the question. Exactly. So my name is Kofi. Um, I'm the founder, the creative director of uh, Yeah, I think we lost coffee. Coffee, or, can you hear us? Because we, uh, now, can you talk? Okay, yeah. you, you hear me? Yeah, now okay. we can hear you. So, excuse me for that. So, my name is Coffee. Um, I'm a creative director and founder of the digital innovation agency called Newsel. So, we are based in uh, West Africa, Senegal, um, and Germany and Estonia. Uh, thanks for this presentation. Uh, very interesting presentation. I think that also a very complex one. And, uh, and uh, I will try to first to, to ask some questions about some details on the content. Um, I, I want to know for you uh, if it's, uh, it's legitimate to have, for example, in this project, the implication of the British Museum and, for example, the use of this code uh, application. Why why I talk about that? Because for me, if we work on a project in relationship clearly with the Togolese, it's very important that the dimension of infrastructure is very essential and um, how to say that essential and sensitive. Because for me, Discord is a a gaming messaging app. We've already a license, so it's not um, an open system, it's a closed one for the, the first time. 
And secondly, when we talk about the British Museum, it's already uh, a museum who have a strong culture about digital assets. So we masterize very well the DAM, so the digital asset management. And it will be strange for me to have an actor who are already in the kind of uh, a court of restitution, the, the artifact with part now of the conversation or the system that will create justice for this, um, for this in fact, uh, project or situation. So for me, uh, for be frank, the British Museum or other entities need to be really external of this kind of uh, project. I just want to have your opinion about that. Okay, Kofi, to understand your question, is because uh, I at some moment I, I stopped to hear you. Uh, you are asking about the Discord as a platform to share and to talk, and the on why we put the British Museum as like one actor uh, inside the presentation and inside our project. That is your exactly. question. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay, exactly, exactly. so uh, yeah, well, Discord, I think that um, we, we, we think in Discord because uh, it's the place where the, this kind of like NFT um, market or NFT relations are start to being built. But if it doesn't fit to the toggle list, we can use any kind of other tools that were suggested by, by the people that uh, will take part of the project. If they use another system or Telegram or WhatsApp or, mm -hmm. m or a mail, like uh, we are open to use any, any of the other system. It's not like we propose Discord. All of this is like our proposition after we think like isolated, like trying to develop this project uh, in a way to, to manage a, like a, some kind of system that mm -hmm. can help to uh, archive some goals. But okay. everything can be changed, uh, hopefully, by the council. <laughs> that if the council okay. says, okay. maybe, maybe this court is not going to work. Okay, perfect. Just tell us uh, what kind of system you want to use, and we use it. It's like that. And the other is like, um, for me, like, it's, I know that the British Museum has this kind of like, he, I, I, yesterday I, re, I hear one of the podcasts because uh, Sename sent me, sent me some information and I, was, I spent the, the weekend reading all the information and I discovered uh, about the African Heritage uh, Organization and uh, mm -hmm. they have like a podcast and they, they release uh, on, I think that the past week on 12, yeah, one podcast about uh, digital uh, restitution. And what what was the problem with the digital restitution that some of the museum, including the British Museum, are proposing, and this kind of like situation that are not so clear that they are trying to do. And uh, I put the British Museum and uh, and the, the Saint Louis Dresden and Humboldt Forum, and uh, just to to mention some of them could be okay, any, okay. any kind any kind of like institution that has this kind of ethnographic museum in a way. And the second way. Uh, for me, it's important to have this kind of like big players in a way, because I see. because in a way, they sooner or later they're gonna have an NFT collection. Sooner yeah, I understand. Later, sooner or later, for example, the Deutsche Bank will accept will create some kind of like Bitcoin uh, like trading system for Germany. Uh, so sooner or later, this this is going to happen. The problem is that if they, for example, say, okay, we are going to do to buy an NFT of like the Richard Turner pieces or like, I don't know, mm. the Pieta of Michelangelo on these kind of things, they are just repeating the same colonial instinct that are like, that build this institution. And in a way, this project will succeed even if they, if they can, if we can prove that they are still colonial, even yeah. when they say publicly that they are going to try to repair this wound and we can prove that they are like doing, that they are not doing anything to do it. I think that this is a success too. So uh, that I don't know if that answers your question or like. Yeah, yeah. I think that I think that the you you answer very well to the question. I will just add some uh, substance substance to to it. Um, why why Discord? Because um, Discord in fact is an app who come from the gaming sector. So 
By the way, I work in the gaming industry since 10 years. I'm a kind of pioneer in Africa. And uh, the big problem that um, we will face, first of all, with this kind of hub is to train the people to use it clearly and efficiently. Because in fact, this code is a, is a community app management uh, system first. Uh, we work from gaming and now um, NFTs, crypto communities use it uh, accurate for build their, their communities, that's the, that the first thing. But for this kind of project, of course, it's better to have our own system or an open source system that we can get, in fact, the control from Togolese, in fact. I think that is very important because one time you are on this code, you are also with other communities all around, all around the world. It's not really, in fact, a close, a close, a close place anymore. Very easy to, to see the information go after the first things. Uh, the second things um, with the, the museum strategy, uh, as you said, we saw already many museums who want to anticipate in the next era, in fact, of the digital artifact. So yes, they want to restitute the, 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 the artifact, they, but we, we understand that they, they also anticipate the next wave or to manage, in fact, the digital, the digital um, artifact. And I think that also um, on the project like that, I think the training and the education is very also important because these technologies is easy to talk about them. It's easy to speak about them, but when we begin to use it, as I do, for example, since two years day to day, is, is, not really, is not really the same thing. So if we don't take the time to train people who work from our scientific community, uh, as already some clashes because, you know, you, you are, as I, I like and said, you want to make use uh, Discord, which is a gaming app to a scientific guy who work with a designer. So it's not the, the, the same kind of things. And it's very important to have this, this this dimension of training people before, including how to use uh, cryptocurrency for payment. For example, me, I use um, MetaMask as a payment system. Uh, you need to train people to use MetaMask. And so far, the problem that I have with the cryptocurrencies, okay, I use cryptocurrencies, but all I can do for trust from the cryptocurrencies on my local money in Togo for use it really for by project, for example. So all these aspects of the, the, the project need to be take account. And lastly, is also the problem of digital territory, because right now we enter in the, in the arena of um, politics, so digital territory. Uh, I think just last year, we have now our own data centers in Togo. It means that the majority of our data now need to be a resident on the local territory in Togo. It means that for this kind of project, we need to work for with the ICT Gov Agency to be sure that this project has really a digital territory in the digital sovereignty of the Togo. This is also the big, the big yeah. problem. Thank you, Kofi. Yes. Yes, I'm very sensible of, uh, about all the, the practical points you yeah. you, 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 you underline, and yeah. all the political aspects, and also for this call for more radicalism by perhaps going towards an African uh, app, yes, but yeah, yeah uh, it, is, uh, it is, I think, uh, some of the aspects we could, we could work on together in this yes. council, we will, we, which will men put together Togolese to go forward with this beautiful project, uh, David and Augusto. Uh, have. David, maybe you have you want to add something? Yeah, the discussion about about Discord, I understand the, the comment. Just want to make some trying to explain the reasoning behind. It's just right now we're talking just about the council as the DAO, right? But um, keep in mind that these NFTs. Can not only serve as a negotiation with the institution, can only be sold on the on the open market, right? To, as a way to raise funds for the for the DAO. And it's very important to for the community as a whole, anyone who's interested in the in the in the goal in the project, not only people from Togo, but anyone in the world, 
to somehow be part of the discussion, right? Maybe not part of the discussion of the council, that could be separate, that could be in a private channel within Discord, or even then use a completely different system, right? That they feel more comfortable with. But it's important to have a way to interact with the community as a whole who are interested in this project because they could be your allies as well. And the more involved they are, if you put one of these NFT for sale, the more likely people are gonna to try to actually actively be part of that, to donate money, to, to buy it. And we actually thought about as well, there's another potential mechanism to raise funds for the DAO using uh, a, a token for the DAO that people can buy just as a way to provide a donation, which is basically exactly. other project use called uh, the Constitution DAO, which is very successful at raising a lot of money. And it was just yeah. a donation, right? But it's important for me to, to, be, to know and to be part of that. So we can have two different systems, one for the council that they feel more comfortable using, and one for the people when we have a moderator from, you know, maybe one person from the council, one person from Augusto or myself, just yeah, to exactly. help, we need to know what's going on. Exactly, perfect. Uh, I completely agree with your, with your argument. And uh, once again, the, the project in this globality is very interesting. Uh, congratulations for this uh, mindset of, uh, on the things. I, I want just to add about the, the formation. Yeah, what part of, of like, or like future like plans in the short term is first to try to agglomerate the first, like the first partners of the, of the council that yeah. uh, we need help to do this because uh, we are like far away and you know, the actors that are like actively in Togo, uh, we can do it at the beginning using mail and then we can like find the tool that perfectly fit to, uh, to, to archive the goals. And the second like short project term is this exactly topic that you, that you say that is about formation. Because this technology, you know, like this in these layers looks really easy. Uh, but when you are like using it, sometimes it's a little bit tricky. And for do that, uh, we have like already made some tests about the functionality of the DAO, the functionality okay. of the multi-seq wallet. And the thing is that we have already the system and when we manage to have like a group of five or ten uh, like persons that that are going to take really serious part in the council, we can organize like the first like teaching session to mm -hmm. to create the wallets in MetaMask for each of the participants to to explain how it works to make to uh, to start to make the interviews inside any kind of technology that they want to use to create this because because in in some place of this chain you need to have like a database with names and crypto address you know and the discord will work for that because you can in my case you can create like a, a, a channel that is hidden that i cannot see the channel that is from the council and then they can for example put that every message needs to be there and you cannot delete it so you can find easily a direction with the name so you can find easily the people that are taking part and when this happened, we have this kind of like the, the, for like the short term to create this kind of workshop where you can learn how to create your MetaMask, learn how to mint the NFT and learn how mm -hmm. to, um, in a way, use the multi-sig wallet to, to vote as, as a training, you know, like before exactly. like you start to put money on it, how to, to train the people to, to, to make several rehearsal of what, as, what, how, how it worked in the part of the technology. Uh, and when they learn, they can share this information and be multiplier of this knowledge. Because, exactly. But but for that reason, we need to create this this first like council really strong because need need to be people that first has the commitment to share this knowledge. Second has the commitment to at least has like a weekly meeting, in a way with us and with the council in their times in their uh, like you know like they need to meet I I think weekly. To, to start to develop projects like constantly, you know, or to have this 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 kind of debate constantly to to manage to 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 build this kind of like negotiation because otherwise if you they, if the council meet once time per month and then they decide each three months that maybe this piece and they vote and then everything is in this time, uh, I think that maybe this is not the project for do that because. The, the the thing of this project is need to be is, is like synchronized with time because if we don't do it like like a like a like a daily rehearsal or a daily exercise of the of of the empowerment nobody will take it serious 
in, in yeah. the institutions. So, I so, agree. Uh, and and the, other part, the, the other side of this is that, uh, well, in, in, in my side from here that I am now in Berlin, my, my role is to each time that the council decides something, trying to find how to present this project and how to open this, this conversation. For example, if they say, okay, the first NFT that we want to create is in Dresden, so uh, it's my responsibility to try to find a meeting with the people from Dresden to sit, uh, to talk about this, this particular piece with the council and to agree this meeting so they can meet, they can talk, they can explain his position, they can offer the NFT to the collection and they can like start to have like a, like a unilateral communication without the steps of the government, of the embassies, of the, a lot of actors that are like making everything slow. Because with this is everything the opposite of slow, but I will not say fast. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Another question for Augusto and David, maybe she or Gregor, if you are still there. Yeah, thanks very lot for the for your interesting presentation. I have a question um, about the council and the people who can be part of the council. Um, because like, if you say only the people from, from Togo, then it's also the question that like the former uh, German colony Togoland was also part in, in Ghana. And if there are some um, spiritual objects that belong to a community that is now a uh, part of uh, the Ghana nation state, then you have a problem how you can involve these people. Or also um, this Pan-African realities that people are like bound to Togo, Benin, Ghana, Nigeria, so um, people are, they have not just one like home, they have many homes or they're living uh, abroad now, but they are like, um, they belong to the com communities where these spiritual objects belong. And then the question would be uh, um, yeah, how you can involve these people too. And also the second thing that this concept of a nation state is also uh, very much bound to the colonial project. And if you now say uh, our project is only for like people who are um, having a Togo um, permit, then it's also kind of maybe repeating this colonial setting and it's maybe a, um, a small dangerous thing inside. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I, I totally understand that you, you, we meet before and you told me this and for me it's like, yeah, well, uh, it's, it's written in Togo, but uh, if you have like any suggestion on how to embrace all the communities that that want to take part in the council, uh, we can change the word in the presentation and in every place that is needed, because at the end, the council are the ones that are like accepting the people. So if they decide if people from Ghana, from Benin, from Nigeria, they want to take part and the council agree under the DAO votation that take part in the prostitution program of the pieces that they are like discussing, for me, those is not a problem. It's not like they're like close to this. It's like, it's for maybe it's my colonial past too, that I think that this nationality and maybe it's a problem in, and if you have like a, a, a best way to address these communities, I will really change it. It's, and if they if the council agree to receive people from a lot of different places and they want to and to become like an actors in this kind of debate they can they can do it because they are like free to accept the people that they think that they are going to contribute to this debate so it's not close like with an id is the only id that you need to show is to have a meeting with the other people from the council and if they agree like you can come from ghana you can come from germany they they need to agree who are part of the council. And, um... I, I, I completely um, agree with, you, with your point, but the, the fact that is uh, sometimes complex is, in fact, when you look at, at a country like Togo, uh, Togo is the result of a division of colonialism, because in fact, when you look at, at the history, Togo, Benin, and Ghana are the Dome Kingdom. So in fact, these three countries in the past are already a big kingdom. So yes, is um, it can be easy to include other people, but 
we need to include them regarding the how to say that the the following of the history is very is very important for example it will be difficult to see people from nigeria you know enter in this project because the culture are, are, are not really the the same just to give you some numbers about cultures in africa so africa right now is 54 countries 3000 culture 2000 languages just 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 like that so imagine imagine that and a big part of all this content was purchased in museum in the western so it creates a kind of big problematic about retrieve this object for understand more our history and also redesign in fact the real uh, lines of our territories in fact in africa so I think that is is interesting to dig on that, but we need really to be to be careful about how we will implement the the regional aspects, you know, the the the, the communities aspect of this kind of project. This is my my uh, contribution. One thing to as well, Augusto and I, is the idea that we can have sub DAOs, right? Maybe if there's uh, very different communities with their different goals and also fighting for the same restitution, but for different cultural objects, we can create separate DAOs with separate councils, right? That the idea is that we can reuse the same technologies to serve other communities looking for the same purpose. So this is something that we, we can do. Like if we see different, very different goals and people and approaches, we can just separate the two and just reuse the same technology for both. Exactly. Agree. Thank you. Thank you all. I'm sorry we don't have much, much time. And thank you all. Uh, again, very interesting project. Uh, it uh, foreshadows a, a new space that I have been calling for a long time at the junction between colonial studies and digital uh, studies. And it can also be considered as an initiative in, the, in a field that is beginning to become more and more big uh, which is called now digital uh, 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 heritage. I'm thinking about, by example, uh, to open Restitution Africa, which objective is to collect data and develop Afrocentric knowledge on Western collection in order to inform debates on the issue of the, of the, of the restitution. Thank you again all, and we will uh, push this project to help him go as far as we, 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 we can. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.